All right. So for the past two years now, I've essentially been, you know, squeaking out, you know, you know, I've been attacked and berated, you know, a cough here, cough there, juke it, you know, I turn around, twist it, tr pull out all the stops and moves, all the bells and whistle, in effort to dodge COVID and other related illnesses that have been cropping up around the seasons, right? And I'm usually a person with pretty strong immunism about every year or so, you know, a lot more frequently when I was younger. But yeah, for quite the, you know, amount of time I've not been sick during the literally a pandemic, I've just not been sick. And finally, you know, I rest my weary head against my pillow, you know, last night and I close my eyes and I wake up and my throat is fucking raw. If Gordon Ramsay, you know, looked at my throat, and he was my doctor, he would say, my God, you get the fuck out of here. He'd call me an idiot sandwich. He'd say I had, you know, a donkey's ass for a, uh, a brain, and then he'd send me out of the kitchen. You know, that's how raw my throat was. I was not speaking at all, unless I had to, right? And because of that... You know, I was like, well, you know, it's like, damn, two years. But I was thinking, you know, just last week, you know, oh, I've got two years. Uh, I've gotten two years. So statistically, I would probably, yeah, I've had, I had some, I have some uh, stutter and lisps. So those words with a lot of S's and T's in them are not my strong suit. All right. Hello, friend. Yeah. So statistically, it makes sense that I'd get sick at some point. And I told that to my boss a couple, you know, a few days ago. And, well, guess what happened? I'm sick now. In fact, my whole house is sick. Right? So, what better to do than to get out a folklore fun? Alright. So now we get into the, the, the meat and potatoes, so to speak. Right? So one of the last frontiers, you know, the deeps and bowels of the earth. Yes, I like to read off the script. Oh, jeez. Right? The vast jewels man's lay claims to, you know, the species who have forsaken the sun for comfort of darkness, you know, but with less water. And, you know, much of the things we can hope, you know, we never see, you know, there's a lot to the under, to the deeps of the earth that don't have to do with like the water or deep ocean. The, the earth is kind of like a vast network of caverns, rip, underground rivers and pockets that hold things we might never see even in our lifetime. I've been to Chattanooga once and went basic basically there's an elevator at the top of the mountain that took you down into the mountain and below. I've been in more caves than you know, I've been in more caves than I could probably say I've been anywhere else. I've only been to one Wyoming. Uh and I've been to like I think three caves off the top of my head. Right? Pretty weird places sometimes. It's best if you're in a group. And as we bore into Mother Earth, ye, right, um, Earth Chan, <laughs> we find gems, gold, platinum, but some miners think there's a little more than riches down there. Now, to tangent a little, Pluto is the Roman god of the underworld and the riches beneath the earth. All the kind of gems we find down there are technically his, according to Roman mythology. Right, I should probably pop a, lo a lozenge in, but I have no idea where, well thank you, uh, I have no idea where I put them, sorry, just, something just fell on my leg, um, yeah, I have no idea where they are, and I'm not going to stop the recording, so we'll just deal with it, alright, so, you know, that's why, when, you know, in stories like Orpheus, uh, I think that was his name, right, Orpheus, or Heracles, it was told that you were never supposed to take things from there. You know, the pomegranates that grew there, the gems, the, the riches and stuff, they belong to Hades, and if you were to take them, you were trapped there forever. Right? And, so, yeah, yeah. Right? Oh boy. Right. So, as we kind of, you know, tap deeper into into the earth, you know, for all these valuables, you know, platinum, gold, coal, miners have seemed to have, you know, picked up on something 
you know. And here is kind of like a short excerpt. You might recognize this rhyme. Last night or the night before, Tommy knockers, Tommy knockers, knocking at my door. I want to run. I don't know if I can, because I'm so afraid of the Tommy knocker man. Now that is a yeah. I'm well. I'm quoting it from the Tommy knockers by Stephen King, but you know, to his credit, it is based off a folklore of sorts. Now in America, they're called the Tommy knockers, but in, you know, England, they're called the knockers, right? Sorry, I've just, I just heard someone cough the plague into my household. <laughs> yeah. Now, the book The Tommy Knocker has a lot to do with digging in the earth, right? I'm not going to... Maybe I'll save that for a time when I cover the book, perhaps. Or talk about it in depth. Or, like, the more in great detail. Because I'm going to bring it up a little bit more today. Right? The Tommy Knocker is... Uh, you know, in that book, had, because it had to do with, you know, delving deep into the ground to find a object that had been unearthed accidentally, right? And it's this all-consuming kind of drive to dig it up so that what is in the object can get out. And in some ways, it's already doing that. But besides the point, so the, to the titular Tommy knockers are more of a metaphor in that book, but... When, uh, you know, you, uh, people of the UK came over, you know, during, like, uh, the Industrial Revolution, what they also, I don't know if that's exactly where, how far the thing goes back, obviously, you know, even before that, you had Europeans coming in, into America, but I digress, right? Uh, you have these tales of knocking creatures, right, down in the earth, right? So you might get, you know, miners that, you know, just in a dark shaft, doing their thing, getting black lung while they're at it. Huh. Comedy, right? And they just hear a knocking, just on the, maybe on the shaft wall, down ways where they can't see. Maybe a light's gone out. You might be hearing a Tommy knocker, right? Now, the cr creature's history t claims, like I said, to be from the UK. Uh, I've... When I did some research, it came up on Cornwall and well, uh, Wales. Um, so, and the source of these were... Uh, now, this is what leads me to believe that it was probably during the Industrial Revolution when Welsh and uh, um, Corn Cornish immigrants came over from you know, towards New England and America. Right? Um, I don't know what my note says. Cool. All right. That's when, you know, the Tommy knockers came around, you know, and that's, you know, kind of the name that was used, obviously, for the book. Now, when, like I said, when the Tommy knockers deals with a lot of digging in, you know, kind of like that this object was not meant to be released. And that's kind of what I feel like the Tommy knockers, you know, stand for. We're coming into their territory. Now, the Tommy knockers have been either mischievous or they have been rather malicious. But at the end of the day, they're kind of like just gnomes that live in the earth, sort of, so to speak. And their titular knocking is just, you know, the sign that maybe you shouldn't go down this way. Maybe man should not go into the earth like it has. You know, it's because that all relates back to like, what is the earth really? You know, we don't know the deep oceans because we can't even go down there. We don't know the deep caverns, so maybe you, but you might have seen my uh, short story, What We Found in the Earth, right? But, you know, I'm to find this. The, it's a lot more than we, it's a lot more than we think. And some people think that, you know, in the earth is its own, another sphere, a hollow earth. That's usually the basis for hollow earth theory, right? Or maybe a lizard man or... You know, a dinosaur or whatever is down there, right? So, that was also again, you know, that's been done before. Um, uh, but yeah, what well, you know, what does live down there? What is like? I remember there was a. I think it's as below. Not no, I think that's the one about the French catacombs, but there's a. I'm trying to think, it's the British movie, I think. Or the one, it's the American movie that has to deal with, like, the creatures down there. I have no idea, man. Right? But, yeah. It, you know, there's so much we don't know about what's down there. For all we know, there could be, 
an intelligent-ish race. I say ish. I don't know. They could be smarter than us. They could be Morlocks for all we know. Right? Uh, you know, these intelligent creatures that just sense that they could fuck with us, you know. And there have been miners who, you know, very much fear the mines that they go into. I believe it was in a Shrouded Hand video that talked about miners who prayed to a god, you know, as, you know, luck and, you know, safety for going into the mines. I think, I don't remember what, I think it was South America, yeah. Or Mexico, it could have been Mexico, I don't know. But yeah, these miners would pray to them, or there's these stories of Reddit, and I know Reddit's not the most reputable source, but yeah, that, you know, they've heard quite a bit, you know, quite a bit, and don't know what they've quite seen when they uh, went uh, towards the knock, and that was a rockin', right? And, you know, and maybe it's just an allegory for man's ego, you know, when we think we can go anywhere, do anything, well, maybe we might be up against quite, uh, we're up against quite more than we can handle when we go into the earth. Oh, and if you're underground and you hear some knocking down the path or down the cavern walls, you know, maybe you're a bit lost from your tour group in the deep bowels of the earth. Don't go near the knocking. All right, and have a good day.